Hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cool, Heli Pad. <laughs> hey, since I mastered how to do this, at least I think that I have, I want to show you exactly how to do this without the fuss, the muss, the craziness of the glue and whatnot. And this also gives me an opportunity to tell you what happened with my last video. Some of you guys saw that it was up and then it was taken down and it wasn't available anymore. What the heck's going on with that? Well, let me tell you all the rest of the story while I show you how to do this right. So the first thing that you do, flip this upside down. This is the carpet. Get it aligned. The alignment is this way. I know that I aligned it with this front edge. So I'm aligning it again with the front edge. I've got it all measured around. So I at least have you know, the minimum clearance here, at least two inches. I really should have had three, but whatever. You take your pen, Sharpie, and you mark all around it, okay? You can kind of see this line, I hope you can see it. And because this is contact adhesive, it's gotta dry just a little bit, okay? So I brought my little uh, heat gun out here because it's a, it's a very cold, and very humid day and well it might have a little issue drying so I am going to spray this area also spray this area wait for the glue to dry just a little bit and then it's gonna go plop just like this all right, while I spray this on here, I just want to say that uh, I was the one that took my own video down. Um, and it's basically because the all-seeing eye of you-know-who basically took the first 10 seconds of the video and said, no, that belongs to somebody else. So you can go ahead and keep it up, but all of the revenue that this video develops is gonna go to this person who claims this copyright. And I don't know about you, but you know, I'm kinda cheap. And I um, want to take credit uh, for my own work. And for the 10 seconds that the other person put on there, you know what? I wasn't allow, gonna allow them to get my content. So, I took the video down on my own and redid some of that content, which basically covered it up so that the all-seeing eye could not see it. And magically delicious, everything is fine once again. So that's the rest of the story. I know I breezed over this pretty quickly in the last video, um, but everywhere where you have a bend, even these small little bends here, you're going to have to take out nibbles. This is a really quick bend here, so you probably just one, but here you're gonna have to take out probably one to two, maybe actually two to three more than likely. Don't make any cuts within a quarter inch of this because it still needs to wrap around this corner. Okay, and that goes for all of the cuts. Do not cut anything within a quarter inch of that line because otherwise you'll have a little bare spot at the very end wherever that cut got a little bit too close. So I'm gonna start with this one down here because it looks like it's just a kind of a sharp one there. I'm gonna go right at where it bends, maintaining a quarter inch away and just cut out a little bit there that will allow this piece to go up and this piece to go up without getting all kind of bound up right in here so it'll overlap all right so now i'm going to go right at this corner where it's straight till about right here so i'm going to start off at a little bit of an angle
Okay, that'll do it. So this can kind of come up. This is going to go right beside it. This will go right beside this one. This will go right beside that one. And so on and so on. If you don't get this wide enough, you'll actually have overlap. Oh, yep. There I'm going to have overlap right there. So I'm going to have to cut this one back just a little bit. Now we are at an inside corner, okay? Now, instead of wide wedges, you could just... I'm going to aim right for the center of this and go within a quarter inch. Now I'm going to come... Now, if this radius was here and something... A line was perpendicular coming off of it, that's the direction I want to make the cut. So your cuts are going to be wider down here and shorter up here. Here's about an angle that I want that's perpendicular to that curve. And the curve stops about right here. Okay, and the curve stops about right there, perpendicular. Okay, so when all of this goes up, it's going to go like that fan away from himself so so now it's not binding up on anything it's, it's going to look really good these are long edges here and once again it's not necessary to make these but it's helpful if you want to do just a little bit at a time i glue that down i can hold that it's just a little bit at a time and then i can come back and get that it's just a little bit at a time so that's the reason why I cut these in, these long strips. It's not because it's going to get bound up. Here we go with one of the most cool parts. I'm using a small bolt, about the same size as the bolt that is going to be going through it. All right, now I'm going to be using a much larger bolt to make these two penetrations here and here for the door handle and for the window knob. This is going really fast, which is something that I really like. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hang the edge over so any overspray goes off the table and not onto any of our part where it can gunk up the good side of this. I'm gonna spray just what I can hold on not only the panel, but also the carpet. Allow it to dry a little bit. Of course, this is contact cement. And then flip it over, it should adhere really quick. I know some of you guys are going, wait, 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 <laughs> you're, you're doing this wrong. Yeah, I did it wrong. So when I cut the corner, it actually should be, you know, cut a lot more severely so that when it wraps up, it doesn't overlap. So before this completely dried, I went ahead and snipped this off. I'm going to have to snip this back even more so that when I flip it forward, it doesn't overlap and create an extra bit of, of uh, carpet there. Last step is to retorch and make sure that these holes go all the way through.
Thanks so much, Chad, for letting me know about this because, man, it, it, uh, I, I think that this is going to help with that soundproofing to be able to absorb any of the reverberation that actually gets inside. Because although this is not going to stop a lot of the, the noise that comes in, but at least will reduce the amount that is ricocheted around. Just like the shower scene, you know what? There wasn't a whole lot of noise. It was just me talking, but me talking reverberated around and it made it sound like it was three times louder than what it really was. But the beauty of it is just fantastic. Thanks so much again, Chad. Man, this is really great. So there we have it. Man, this almost makes me want to replace these <laughs> this door handle. This is not OEM. And to get a plastic guard over that. Door looks too good not to have that happen. Well, my son and I just got back from the monthly TFAP run. That's the Emergency Food Assistance Program. And while we were out, we were discussing the new door panels and I, I kind of had an epiphany. And you know what? I think if we all got together and put a whole bunch of comments in this video that says, Bob, you need to make some really cool handles out of some blacksmithing stuff. You know, some just, just short, but you know, like a little cool curl or a twist to it or something. Wouldn't that be cool to have some kind of really nice, uh, blacksmith handles in there. I think that would be awesome. And Bob, I know that you're the one that can figure it out. You know, it's that little star thing that you're going to have to have right here and right here. But I know that you can figure it out, Bob. Come on, everybody put a comment down there that says, Bob, you need to do this. That would look cool. All right, you guys. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.